Hi everybody, welcome to the second class of Beginners with Tight Legs and Hips. Last class we used a chair, it didn't have to be a yoga chair, just a kind of a chair, any chair, and a strap and a block. And this class we're going to be relying more on the actual mat and blocks and a strap. So gathering all those things and let's open our space together. Closing the eyes completely. And with each breath, begin to turn the senses inwards. And then lifting the hands and pressing the palms together. Inhale. And then place the hands underneath the shoulders and widen the fingers apart and line the knees up with your hands and the knees underneath the hips. So not going back or not coming too much forward. Just begin to curl the spine, inhaling on the roundingness, exhaling on the archingness. A few cycles of these. On the archingness, lift the head, open the chest. And on the inhale, as you round, lift the belly to the neck, drop the head. And then neutralize and come back to the middle. All right, now let's hold the sides of the mat with our hands, grip it, and press down and push away so there's a purpose for the arms. We're going to keep the knees bent, turn the toes under, and find a downward dog with the heels lifted and the knees bent. So keep pressing down into the hands and forward and pushing yourselves back away from the hands. Now lower the head and look at your feet, make sure they're parallel. Make sure the knees aren't coming in towards each other, the heels aren't collapsing towards each other. So the legs also are as parallel as a train track. Feel your femur bones coming into your hip sockets and lift your lower buttocks higher. Okay, let's bend and extend, ready, inhale. And exhale, extend straight from the legs. And then again, bend. And again, ready, inhale. And exhale, extend straight from the legs. Push the front thighs back, push the shins back. And bend, last one, ready, inhale. And exhale, extend, keep your heels lifted. Push yourselves away from your hands. And three, and two, and one, releasing and coming back down to the mat and placing the hands forward as they were when we did our spinal rolls, spreading the fingers apart. Now move the knees a little bit further back so that more pressure is coming onto the hands. You're leaning forward into them a little bit. Turn the toes under, lift your knees up, engage your core. And three, press into the arms and two, and one, good. Now turn the hands open. And ready, and engage, lift the knees, lift the belly button up, and three, straighten your elbows, and two, and one, coming down. Okay, and now turning the fingers this way. If this is not possible, just go the most that you can, stretching out the inner arms a little bit. Ready, and lift the knees up, lift the core, and three, and two, and one, coming back down, and ready for another downward dog. This time we're going to have our hands on the mat, fingers facing forward. Spread the fingers apart, make starfish with your hands. We're going to keep the knees bent and do bend and extend. So moving away from our hands, stretching the elbows, stretching the arms, lowering the head. Check your legs, check the parallelness of the legs, lift the buttocks higher. Inhale and exhale, extend, squeeze the knees straight. And then bend, keep pushing yourself away from your hands. Inhale, and exhale, extend. Push the front thighs back. 
and bend. Last one. Ready? Inhale. And exhale. Extend. That's it. And three. And two. Now we're going to bring the right leg forward. And one. The right leg is coming forward. And then move the back leg in. Turn it open a little bit. And try to press the heel down. So it may not press completely. Just trying to press. And bring the blocks in. In our last session we used the chair to turn the hips forward to face it. Now we have our hands on the blocks and we're turning the hips and they're really facing the short edge of the mat. All right, ready, bend and extend. Inhale. With your exhale, extend. Push the hips back. That's it. And bend. Remember, your blocks can go higher if you need them higher. And exhale, extend. Press the back heel down. Straight to the front leg. And bend. Last one. Ready? Inhale. And exhale. Extend. Now look at that front foot and press down between the big toe and the index toe. That's it. Grip this front kneecap and thigh up. Push the hips back. And three. And two. And one. Excellent. Bending. And we are changing sides. Left leg forward. Right leg back. Try to press the heel down and turn the hips to really face the short edge of the mat. Bend and extend. Ready? Inhale. And exhale. Extend. And bend. Turn the hips again. Inhale. And exhale. Extend. Draw that left femur bone into the hip. And bend. Last one. Ready? Inhale. With your exhale, extend that leg, press down between the big toe and the index toe, press the back heel down, and two, good, and one, we're bending the knee, we're moving the blocks forward, hands to the mat, and we're stepping back to a downward dog with the knees bent, lower the head, stretch your arms, look at your feet, your legs, lift your heels higher, lift the line underneath the buttocks higher, Inhale, and exhale, extend, bend, lift the line underneath the buttocks higher again, inhale, and exhale, extend, and bend, last time, ready, lift the buttocks higher, inhale, and exhale, extend, and two, keep pushing yourself away from the hands, and one, step the right leg forward, and this time you can use your hands to bring it forward to a nice wide lunge. Make sure a knee is over the heel, not this. So use the hands if you have to, to bring it forward, and then move your blocks in. Remember you have heights to choose from. Look at your back leg, roll it in and straighten the back leg, push out through it. Now push yourself forward, and backwards, not up and down, forward and backwards. So the back foot is propelling you, and as you go forward and backwards, you're pressing the hips down. You'll be feeling the thighs opening, the groins opening, all kinds of areas opening. Just keep moving and breathing. That's it, a little bit more. And last one. Right, now let's bend the back leg. And when we're really tight, often we land like this, right on the knee. So with time, working to move the kneecap back. It might not happen today, but stay aware that you want the knee to move back. And then being on the front foot, wherever you are. Now press the hips down, and you feel the stretch, you want this. Now press the hands on the block, so you have several heights, of course. And lift up. So the chest is lifting to the sky but the buttocks are pressing forward and you feel the opening in the groins, in the front thighs. Good, now move the hips back. Ready, we're coming in again. Inhale and exhale. Press the hips down and press the hands down to lift the chest up. And coming out, hip back. Third and last time, prepare, inhale. And with the exhale, enter into it, press down, and then lift the chest up. And then coming out, and we're changing sides. So the right leg back, 
Use your hands if you need to bring the left leg in. So the knee is over the heel, not over the foot, which is more common. Now turn the toes under and straighten the back leg. Check your right leg with your eyes. The kneecap facing the floor, squeeze the knee. You can put your hands to the ground, set the block if you want, rocking forward and backwards. So not only are we feeling the groins and the thighs open, we're also feeling the foot and the toes open, the calf, rocking with the breath. And now let's bring that knee to the mat, remembering that we're trying to move it back. If the knee hurts, you can also put a blanket under the knee, and then hands to the block. Now, be on the dorsal foot, the front of the foot, press the buttocks forward, and then press down into your hands to lift the chest up to the sky. Breathing. The breath has to fill those new spaces. And releasing, moving the hips back. Ready for the second one, inhale. And exhale, pressing the buttocks forward and down, pressing into the hands to lift the chest up. All right, and coming out, lining up for our last one, ready, inhale. And exhale, press the buttocks down. And press into the hands, lengthen your front spine. Front spine runs from the pubic bone to the belly button, through the solar plexus, through the center of the chest. That's it, and two, and one. Exhaling, releasing. Now move the blocks, place the hand on the mat. We're going to bring this left leg back and come back to Adam Keshvanasan, downward dog, starting off with bent legs. Lower the head, lift your heels high, and then feel where the line underneath your buttocks is, and lift that high to the sky. That's it, press your shoulder blades in, relax your neck. Okay, ready, inhale, and exhale, extend. And bend again, ready, inhale, and exhale, extend. Push the shins back, push the thighs back. One last time, ready, bending. Lift the line underneath the buttocks, and exhale, extend. Good, and five, and four, and three, and two, and one. Bending the knees, and coming back down, and out. All right, now generally when the legs are tight, well, the lower back and hips are tight too, so we're gonna work on that now, and we're gonna move the block back here, if you find the block uncomfortable, you can always take a bolster or fold up some blankets or put blankets on the block. So from our hands and knees, we are going to bring the knees closer together and the feet apart, and then lift the left knee up completely and cross the left knee behind the right. Now move your right foot to the other side of the block. And now we're coming to sit on that block. And if your knees are very far apart, you may want to put some more height under the hips. Don't push the knees, work from the hips to access the knees. Now look at your feet and see if you can adjust the feet so that they're not so close to the outer thighs. That immediately demands a little more opening in the hips and that they're as even as possible. Again, this will all change as your practice opens things up. And then when all of that is installed, we are coming forward to your Mudrasan, Gomukasan 3. The important thing is to push into the hands to push the hips back. So even though the spine is coming forward, the hips are pushing back. Stretch the arms, don't let the elbows bend, those arms are strong, engage, and you're pushing into the fingertips to push the hips back, lowering the head down. That's it. Try to relax the lower back and the hips, and to send every single exhalation to the area where you feel the most tension. Mm -hmm. 
and then coming up and walking to the right. So adding in a little twist. Note how one arm is straight and one arm is bent. The straight arm is pulling you forward and the bent arm is helping you to twist. And again, keep sending the exhale to every part that feels that tightness. The exhale will melt it slowly with each breath cycle every time. And now to the left. Again, one arm is long, one arm is bent, turning, twisting. And then coming back up, rocking forward and uncrossing the legs. Now again, knees together, feet apart. And now let's lift the right leg up, cross the knees and move the left foot to the side of the block. And we're ready to sit back down. And every side can be different because our bodies are not completely even. So you may need more height, less height, adjust. Get to know what's right for you. And then look at your feet and adjust those too. When you're ready, inhale. And exhale, coming forward. Stretch the arms and push into the fingertips to push the hips back. So a line of energy going back and a line of energy extending forward. One more breath cycle. And now moving to the right. Stretch the left arm, bend the right elbow, reaching forward, turning, twisting. Flowing with that exhalation. And then back up and to the left. And then coming back up and rocking forward, uncrossing the knees. And now let's turn our toes under and sit back on the heels and stretch out the toes. Our feet are the base of our legs. So as we work to open our legs, we also have to pay attention to our feet, to our toes. So just pressing down, breathing. If it's really painful, you can come in and out a few times. Just gaining the courage to press into that. Bring the hands behind, cross the thumbs together, roll the shoulders back. Open the chest. And now change the interlock so the other little pinky is underneath. And again, roll the shoulders back, the upper outer arms going back, and the chest going forward and up. Press into those toes. Breathe. And then exhale, releasing. And undo the toes. Now sit on your feet. My dress up is called evening pose. And let's just stretch out the top of the foot a little bit. Uh, let's use our bricks, maybe. You can also have your hands on the floor. But if it's very painful, it might be nice to have a little lift. Ready, leaning back. Ooh, feeling the front foot stretch, the front ankle. And back. And again. That's it. And back. And one more time. That's it. Three. And two. And one. Coming out. And releasing those legs. Okay, so let's move the blocks to the side for now. You may wish to have a strap. Where is the strap? We will be using the strap as a strap today instead of the loop part of the strap. So let's bend the right leg back. 
And let's turn to the left, Janu Shushasan, for just the first part of variation. Let's see if we can reach for the outside edge of the foot. If you cannot reach the foot, you can put the strap around and with your right hand, get as close as possible. Left fingertips on the floor. So you're reaching forward and you're twisting. The right arm long, pulling you forward and the left arm bent, twisting. Now we're facing forward to the foot and both hands reaching for the foot, stretching. If you can't reach, you've got the strap to pull yourself. Inhale and exhale, pulling yourselves. Get the abdomen close to the thigh, the front chest close to the thigh and the head is the last thing. And then back up and releasing. Changing sides. So our right leg is straightening and our left leg is bending. Having the strap as needed for the foot, the left hand reaches first, aiming for the outside edge of the foot or holding the strap. This arm is long and straight, pulling us forward, and this hand, fingertips only, the elbows bent, turning and twisting. So lengthening forward, turning and twisting. Lengthening forward, turning and twisting. And now facing the foot, both hands reaching for the foot or both hands holding the strap. Pull firmly, really feel that leg coming into the hip socket and exhaling forward. Think of the abdomen coming to the thigh. Think of the front chest coming to the thigh. The head is the last thing to come down. Breathing here. Try to relax the face to keep the breath fluid. And three, and two, and one. Good, coming up and releasing. Okay, both legs straight out in front, so the strap is there as needed to wrap around the feet. Walking the hands forward, seeing if your hands can reach the outer feet. If they can't, take your strap, place it, and you use the strap as close to the feet as you can. Make sure your feet are doing this where the outer feet are going away from you. Pull so the outer skirting of the feet is coming back towards the outer hips. This is an essential action to learn. And push forward through the ball of the foot between the big toe and the index toe specifically. All right, pulling ourselves forward, Pashimottanasan. Think of the abdomen coming to meet the front thigh first. Everyone loves to think of the head coming down and they end up with a big C shape. So do the opposite, start from the base of the trunk, travel up through the solar plexus, then feel the heart center, the sternum plate coming to the front of the thighs, keep the shoulders broad, then lower the head gently. Then push it forward, keep the back of the neck long, breathing. Keep those legs straight, pulling the femurs into the hips, and then looking up and coming out and down to the floor. Okay, now we are going to make a loop in our straps. So we worked on this a little bit last time. We're going to just do a little different variation. Line up your feet, make sure your lower back is pressing against the floor. Bring both feet off. Now put the loop around the foot, feet. But this time we're not going to hold the loop. So you can tighten that loop up so it's really holding the feet. Bring the knees together. Now use the webbing of your hand between thumb and the index finger to hold the strap. And keep the knees bent, but straighten the arms down to the floor behind you. So the armpits are open and specifically the side ribs here, this part that is so close, is now open, the gills if you will. Okay, we're going to bend and extend. Ready, inhale, and exhale, extend the legs. Try to get them perpendicular to the ground, to wrap the muscles around the leg bones, to pull the toes back, and then again bend. 
Ready, inhale and exhale, extend. Pull the fingers into the hips, feel the hips on the mat, pressing down and two, stretch your arms and one, ready and bend, last one, inhale and exhale, extend, push up, pull back with the hands, but don't pull the legs towards you, just keep them perpendicular. That's it, look at your thighs, are the muscles really wrapped around the thigh bones? Look at your feet, are the outer skirting of the feet coming back to the outer hips? That's it, and three, and two, press the back hips to the mat, and one, bending the knees, and releasing the arms. Okay, let's now take our strap, ending with a twist, is always so wonderful, and move the twist, I mean move the strap to our legs, so that we can twist. So widen the loop enough that you can get it right around the legs. Keep the buckle in the front and then tighten up. Extending the arms so the hands are in line with your shoulders. Not higher like this, really in line. Okay, we'll be bringing the knees to the left and twisting our trunk to the right. Ready? With your breath, inhale. And exhale, knees to the left. Inhale. And exhale, twist to the right. Keep stretching your arms apart. Breathing. Try to not harden the abdomen, which stops the twist. Soften the abdomen, twisting, turning. And now bring the legs back up. Check that you're still in the middle of the mat. Adjust the strap if you need to. Go to the other side. Ready? Inhale. Exhale, knees to the right. Okay, take a moment to get acclimatized to this new sensation. And then inhale. And exhale, turn and twist the trunk to the left. The arms are really helpful as we twist. We press the backs of the hands into the floor to help us turn and twist the back ribs. Again, check that you're not hardening in the abdominal area. Soft and fluid there, the organs turning. And two, and one. Bring the legs back up, and feet to the mat. Check you're in the middle. One last twist. So on the second time, I want you to really check that your knees are coming as high as possible towards your elbow. All right, so feet off the mat, knees to the left elbow. Inhale, and exhale, knees to the left elbow. So nice and high, if possible. And then inhale, and exhale, twist from the belly button, upwards to the right. That's it, twist and turn, good. And three with each exhale twist. And two. And one. Good. Bring the legs back up. Check that you're in the middle. Recheck your arms. Last one, last time. Inhale. And exhale the knees all the way to the right elbow. Use your eyes to check that you're going as high as you possibly can. Then turn back to face the ceiling. Preparing for the twist. From the belly button up. Inhale. And exhale, twist and turn to the left, away from the legs. And two, each exhale, twisting. And one. Bring the legs back up. Remove the strap. And in dvi para sutaka para just check that your feet are really lined up. The inner knees are lined up. So, resting in alignment, in evenness. And now keep the right knee bent and extend the left leg. And as you extend it, roll that thigh in. Let me move back. There we go. Roll that thigh in so the heel is pressing down, the toes up. And then bring this right leg closer and closer. Breathing, relaxing the shoulders. And two. And one, changing sides. Left leg into Ikapada. Extend that right leg, roll it in. 
and reach, exhale, let the groins open, bring the leg closer and closer. And then releasing. Both feet on the floor, parallel knees bent. Now lift the right leg up and place the right outer ankle on the front of that knee thigh and roll this leg open. And then bring your left hand behind your left knee and you're drawing the left leg closer but you're not letting the knee come before it. So you're rolling the thigh open, the knee away as the leg comes closer. Breathing. Feeling the hip, allowing it to broaden. And releasing. Of course, changing sides, bringing the left leg up. Roll it open with your hands. Teach the body from the outside where you'd like it to start going. And then lift the leg up, the hand behind the knee, drawing the leg closer and keeping this knee away, not letting it lead. So opening this whole hip, thigh, groin area, breathing. And then releasing feet to the floor. And now lifting this right leg back up and either repeating this or for a little bit of knee opening, seeing if you could bring the foot higher up the thigh and point the knee forward. And then bring the left leg up, ikapada, in a half lotus pose, half pemasan. There we go, gently easing that out. And if this is too much, go back to the last opening we did where the foot was on the front of the thigh. And coming out, last one, last side. Bring that left leg up, so this is the first position. So you can do this again, or see if you can slide the foot down and then interlock the fingers around the front of the right knee and bring that right leg closer. And then releasing and taking that out. And it's now time for our Shavasana. So let's roll over, take a blanket, and let's do another inverted Shavasana with our legs up against the wall. Remembering that we do not want to strain the legs, so take the distance you need so you're not feeling strain in the backs of your thighs. You are supposed to be relaxing with the benefits of an inversion, unless you don't do inversions. So coming in so that we can swing the legs up and the blanket is underneath the hips, not the middle back, not the upper back, the hips. The legs can straighten and roll open without feeling excessive pain. So that the breath can relax, the system can relax. Shoulders roll back. Extending the arms and turn the palms open to the sky, making ourselves fully open in this Resting pose, allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and allowing the pose to cleanse us of that which is ready to be expurged. So, closing the eyes, relax the entire body, let the eyeballs melt backwards. And with an exhale, letting go completely. Shavasana.
and then bend in the elbows and bring the hands to rest on the front pubic bone. When you feel ready, the eyelids opening. And then bending our knees, sliding the feet down the wall and rolling over to the side, pushing ourselves back out. And welcome back. Our leg and hip practice is complete. So, just like the first one, the important thing is to repeat. And once you've learned the moves, you don't need to follow this class, you just bring the moves into your everyday. You can possibly merge class one and this class together and bring that into your absolute everyday life. And then the changes will start to come. Think of your legs as the trunk of the tree. If the legs are all jammed up, it's going to be impossible to access the spine, the chest. So we want to get this area fluid, breathing and open. Good luck. Let me know how it goes. Take care.